Yo, Sleepy Radish here. Today is a pretty busy day and I also have my yearly performance review with my manager. But before all that nonsense, let's do the most important task of the day. Make some damn coffee. Speaking of coffee, do you remember that really old coffee machine from the other videos? Well, for Christmas I received something that can be called a little upgrade. Let me show you. After I first tasted what this bad boy can do, man, it's like I've never had coffee before. Anyway, let's get to work. As I mentioned before, I have my yearly performance review with my manager. And it's a pretty important meeting, so I have to prepare for it. Maybe you're asking yourself how you could prepare best for these kinds of meetings. Because it's not like a product presentation where you just make sure that everything runs smoothly for the demo. I personally treat it as a negotiation, even though it's not really that. Let me explain. In a performance review, your position and salary are discussed, and just doing your job is usually not really going to cut it if you want to get a raise, especially if you're working in a bigger company. I say that because people usually have a lot on their plate, especially managers, so nobody will permanently watch you and write down all the good things you did over the course of one year. So it's your job to keep track of your achievements. Did you train or help some more junior developers than yourself? Or maybe you helped some people on another project with some technology you're more familiar with. Maybe you did some overtime or fixed some weird bug that was happening sporadically. These kinds of things showcase involvement and are really appreciated by upper management. Okay, my meeting is coming up, so let's change it to something a bit more professional, like this t-shirt that screams summer vacation. Back to what I was saying, keep in mind that they don't really care about how nicely written your code is or how high your test coverage is. Don't get me wrong, those things are really important, but what they do care about is the business side and your impact on the organization. Maybe you're working closely with the end client, and they got really fond of you for being easy to work with. You have no idea how big that is. Try to ask for some written feedback. That email or document will give you a really big advantage, because it literally screams, I'm valuable. Okay, the meeting is done. I did get a raise. Although not as big as in the past. That's just because of the current shitty situation that the economy is in. But I'm still happy, because my manager really appreciated my involvement and that's more important than a couple of extra euros at the end of the month. Plus, having a good relationship with my manager helped me a lot in the past and can surely come in handy in the future. Moving a little to the more techy side of things, let me tell you what I'm currently dealing with at work. Internationalization. Often abbreviated as this. It's just a fancy term for making your application accessible to people from different linguistic and cultural backgrounds. In the context of Angular, one powerful tool for handling internationalization is the NGX Translate package. If you've ever needed your Angular application to support multiple languages and dynamically switch between them, this package is your go-to solution. Let me show you the basics. Okay, first you need to set up your translation files. These are essentially key value pairs, where the key is an identifier for a specific piece of text and the value is its translation in another language. As you can see here, we've got two files, one for English, one for French, which contain the translation for some text that we have in our page. NGX Translate allows you to load these translation files dynamically, based on the user's language preference. It supports lazy loading, which means that translations for a specific language are fetched only when needed. This is crucial for keeping your app nimble, especially when dealing with a multitude of languages. Once the translations are loaded, you can use them in your Angular component using the translate pipe. This pipe takes care of fetching the appropriate translation based on the current language setting. And just to demonstrate, I can now dynamically choose from English to French and the text will automatically translate. And I also have no idea what this says. And that's it. Sure, things do tend to be more complicated in a production app, like handling pluralization, date formatting and other language-specific intricacies. For example, the NGX Translate Message Format Compiler enhances NGX Translate by providing support for ICU message format syntax, which is a powerful mechanism for handling complex message formatting and pluralization rules in a way that's language-aware. For instance, based on our count variable, this message will be different. In our case, count is zero, so it's equal to zero, so it's gonna show is. For the second one, if it's zero, it's gonna show nothing, so literally nothing. And for the last one, if it's equal to zero, it's gonna say nothing. 
so our output will be there is nothing. If we go to 2, for the first part we're gonna go the other route, which will show R, the second one will show several, and the last one will show things. As you can see by integrating some cool packages in your app, it's way easier to control and handle internationalization.